Hey, look what we have found A big sound in a small town Far away from the bright lights They're making music every night Discover what is all around A big sound, a big sound. A big sound. Listening to Big Sound Small Town with Sandy Carlton. You stashed his trash in Ecuador, bought a new suit of clothes. Hey, Sue's had a restless fever. Waiting for some mystery man to pay him for his time. Thinking about the money he made couldn't help to ease his mind. Had a day dreaming. Boy, he's just dreaming his life away. Daddy chopped that sugar cane Till one day he fell dead Jesus had a restless feeling Rolling around in his head Working on a midnight boat There were no questions asked The water's so green The air was so clean He just stuck right to his task Boy, he's just scheming his life away. guys were smoking grass and you were at the Green Acres, did you ever envision a Scruggs Festival being up here at a place like this? No, no. no. I always thought it would be played with yeah. Well, you would have had to have a big feel or yeah, a right. small audience, so well, that's what JT told me. Yeah. He said, you know, Cleveland County would be great if there was a place to do it. Yeah. He said, this is a good, clean, yeah, wide we, festival. When we came up, because we had tickets uh, in 2019 and they kept canceling for, right. for the COVID and uh, when we came up here I was not expecting this uh, this nice 
nice sure because i've been going to bluegrass festival sure 1977 yeah and i've been to some pretty rough ones. yeah and yeah it's like wow they have flush toilets and a restaurant and everything they do a whole bunch of restaurants yeah a whole yeah. bunch of restaurants i had a i had a 15 dollar quesadilla yesterday <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it was true. <laughs> yeah, we made it that far now. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's what, you, what you expect in a restaurant. Sure. It's, you know, it's a yeah. nice place. Yeah. Nice and clean and all yeah. you know, that stuff. It is a beautiful place. Yeah. It is, it is. This year we got on to the, to the VIP, and then I found out, well, there's a more VIP or people. Yeah. Place, you know? Double secret VIP. Well, you also could have got the cabanas out there. They're only yeah, five thousand right. bucks. Yeah. You know? Is it just five thousand? Okay. Five. Yeah. Oh, there was nobody in them last night. Here we go. Let's, let's go. Yeah, never mind. We're not going to yeah. show up to sit in the cam- cabanas where we're going. There's no one sitting in there. <laughs> uh, so, smoking grass. Yeah. Right, let's settle this one time and for all. The first people to play at Green Acres. Under Steve Metcalf's. There you go. I'm glad we clarified that. That's correct. Because, yeah, that's that's a sticking point. Yeah. Yeah. We were the first band. And I, and I was not in the band at that time. I didn't come until in 1980. Okay. I was, I was in the band for a fairly short time. I had to go back to Michigan and deal with some family issues and stuff. So, But that's, you know, you- I put that on my resume. Did you did you lay your music, music roots down in Michigan? Uh, well, I, I started uh, playing banjo in Michigan, but I, you know I spent two years playing in my living room, and then I was working for an industrial painting company, and they sent me to Charleston, and uh, then they sent me. They said, "Well, you're going to go to Shelby, North Carolina." I said, "What?" Because in the back of the Earl Scruggs book, there's a history of Cleveland County, right? And I, I said, "Well, I know exactly where we're going." Yeah. Uh, when I when I got there, I stayed in a Holiday Inn, which is now comfortable. Right. And I yeah. The gal at the, de- at the desk uh, is. Uh, do they get, they play music around here? And she goes, Oh, heaven yes. <laughs> I said, Well, how would I find out? She she gave me a phone number of a fellow that we both know, and I called him up and went, went over and started playing some music with him. And then Dale came around and it just kind of snowballed. And uh, we were at. Uh, an apartment complex there, and it sort of was the hotbed of everyone coming for That's you know, good. summer parties. And whatnot. Sure, sure. Well, we know, we know what happened with smoking grass. I mean, we that that went well. Then, then, I did I? Right, so you, when you went back to Michigan, you played music when you got back there. Yeah, I I fell in with a guy, uh, Andy Paul, that uh, he was sort of the greatest hits of mankind. We did everything from Elvis songs to doing banjos and uh and it was it was nice because it was right in my where i went to high school and so and, and i was only out of high school about five years at that time and, uh, and so a lot of people that i went to high school with showed up there and all of a sudden it was the scene for a while and it was back then we played five nights a week for a month at a time in one place yeah House band job, basically. Oh, yeah. It was like, well, this is like having a regular job, except mm-hmm. for it's at night. Right. Yeah. Well, now, so there is some connection here to Green Sky since we're here and they're playing tonight, right? Yeah. I, I was, uh, I played with a, uh, at Wheatland Festival with a band uh, called Grasshopper. And they were breaking up because the um, uh, Glenn House was moving to, Seattle, and so the bass player Chris Carr said, "Well, you want to throw in with these guys because you know they they're uh, young and you know we could probably you know add some things sure. to it." And he was an electric bass player and played played a lot of solo. Right, and that was kind of the thing we did was solo, 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 so play fast, fast, fast. Right, and uh, you know and then I was. They were like 25, and I was 45. And they're still playing fast, fast, fast. Well, yeah, but <laughs> they're n- not as fast. They, they, you know, and it was like, well, we're, we want to go um, out on tour. We're going to go to like West Virginia to the Purple Field, and I'm like, go, you know, be well, because I had uh, two kids in 
school and, sure. and, and business and like, well, you, you guys call me when you get back. And they never came back. I mean, but, they just but, kept on going. But you played on a couple of records, right? I, I played on the first record fully, and then on the second record I played Pedal Steel on a couple of cuts, and there's a there's a hidden track in there at the end where I play. Does he write? That I yeah, wrote yeah. is called, it's an instrumental called Bar Hop. Oh, they, okay. They, they look really like playing the hidden one. And then uh, it was just, you know, they were, they kept on moving along and, you know, they had made some contracts with each other to stick together. And that's, you know, kind of the, kind of the way that bands break up is they just quit. Sure they, they do. They never quit. Yeah. Well, that's good. So I love them guys. I keep in contact with Dave Ruse, the yeah. guitar player. Right. So. Well, that's good then. They've, um, they've kind of made a name for themselves. Yeah. Yep. So I, I just want to interject here that when I went out to do my CD in 2006, Al and I co-produced it, and you know we had a bunch of friends on there and stuff. But he got Mike Duvall, the bass yeah. player, from the Green Sky. Yeah. He actually came to rehearse with us a couple of days, but I wasn't there when he did his. Yeah, he played, right? he played cello. He played cello. Oh, that's was, cool. He was actually a classically trained cellist. So when I'm trying to sell him now, I says, "This has Mike." <laughs> 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 Yeah, Green Sky is sure. the, the catch word. Sure. You know, the, the calling card. So sure. everybody's got to take a drink, like I said. Well, this is funny. I, I will tell you this. I'll put it in the podcast. So today I was walking around asking people about um, who they came to see and all. And a guy tells me, I came to see anybody but Green Sky. <laughs> anybody but? Okay. But, which I thought was kind of funny. I said, well, why is that? He said, last t- three times I saw him, they <laughs> Well, they, <laughs> I hope you don't put that in. <laughs> don't let it slip. I'll, t- I'll take it out. Well, you know, we have talks about them. We're like, wow, <laughs> they end up where they are. But yeah. They are where they are, and they, God's being Well, it's because know. persistence, sir. They're, they're, yeah. uh, they keep on keeping on their It's own persistent. We're, we're not a bit jealous either. But, so yeah, yeah. I'd like to hear the extended version of this interview. If you don't mind <laughs> yes, yes. They're, I will they're let, like yeah. the energized body that is. Well, I mean, I think I think the knock on them, you know, is it's an inconsistent show. One, one night they're really, really good, and the next night they're really, really not. Well, you know, I, as any band can be, you know, I I gotta defend my boys. There. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I understand. I would too. They're, um, you know, they they do a great show, and and uh, you know, they 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 migrated more into the uh, the the uh, jam brass sure. scene. And, that's their stock and trade. And they do a lot of festivals that are not exactly bluegrass festivals. In fact, uh, they, a friend of mine does the Charlotte Bluegrass Festival up, up in Michigan. It's Charlotte. I got you. And uh, and I tried to correct him. They said no, it's Charlotte. And uh, he wanted to uh, have Green Sky play there. And I said, you can't handle the influx of kids of the show. True. This is true. Out, out. You know, because they're really a traditional and uh, traditional festival. He has, he has top-notch acts there. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, they have they have built a big following, without it's, a doubt. It's the Charlotte Bluegrass Festival, and I think this year was the 50th. Wow. It's like 50 long, years? Yeah, it's a long. Well, he didn't always do it. Uh, the fellow that ran at the beginning, uh, he died, and his wife was just going to let it go, and Wes Pettinger picked it. Uh, he said, "Well, I'll, you know, I'll take it over." And yeah. So he's done a very good job with it. He's uh, he hired us to play at his his first season as the head festival. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, just the two. Of yeah. Us. Well, and, you know, it's like we're not really bluegrass kids. Well, that's all right. And we we got uh, Lloyd Douglas and Chris Douglas, who Chris is going to be playing. He plays with the bass with uh, Michael Cleveland. Yeah. And Lloyd, uh, he he had played with Jim and Jesse, and you know. Myriad of bands. I think it was in David War or David Davis and Warrior mm-hmm. River Boys. That's cool. And uh, he's an excellent banjo player. Well, so we we brought our own, you know, bluegrass up to, on stage. So sure. That, you know, see, we can do this. Yeah, we can do this if we need to. Well, la- the last time we played there was two years ago, and we were doing we did a James Taylor song, and, and uh, we were opening the festival, and I thought, I hope they don't kill us, and. Uh, because we weren't doing bluegrass. Right. We got off stage and this guy I've never heard of James Taylor done, done, song done that way. And uh, like, wow, 
They like this. Mr. James Taylor King right oh, here, yeah, too. He's Mr. James Taylor. He is. Well, thank you. Uh, but, so you're playing up there, too. I mean. Uh, right now, I'm not. I, uh, kind of, COVID kind of pulled me yeah, out of yeah. sales. And I, I'm, I'm teaching banjo, and, and uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I still have my business. And I'm trying to put that to bed and, and move on back on to doing more music. Sure. Because that was, that's my first love of music. And it just, you know, I've made tens of dollars doing it. Yes. So I want to just continue making tens, tens of dollars. Of do- yeah. I think, I think we all have together, so here. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Um, as long as you save it and don't spend it. Right. Oh, no, I have to spend it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on fun stuff, you know. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm more guitars. More right? guitars, right. yes, exactly. I'm, I'm way behind on the money I made at, at playing music and the amount of guitars I have. Yeah, but you always tell anyone around you that, oh, I know, I got a bargain on this thing, you know. It didn't I just co- don't tell my wife how much. Exactly. Know. Well, I, I get hey, hopefully she won't listen to this. <laughs> hey, do you still got that uh, heritage guitar? It's like, no. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. I mean, that's. And, and hopefully, if I when I die, um, she's, she finds someone to help her sell them for what they're worth, and not what I told her to cost. Oh yeah, but that's what. She, <laughs> but that. But that is what she'll sell them for. I mean, that's the going. That well, is the going well, thing. Three hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. Like, this what, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff if you die? And I said, well. Uh, uh, Marty knows Marty Klein is a friend of mine he knows how much they're worth he'll help me get rid of them so I'm actually trying to sell some off because I have lap steels and he's got a room full of stuff I have mandolins I have ukuleles uh, yeah. you know, plastic or uh, plastic Kamako ukuleles yeah. they're you know they're they're worth about eight hundred dollars you know it's like well I can, go, I can go to a guitar center and get one for oh, eighty four dollars yeah, $4. yeah. It's like, well, it's not a Kamaka. So? Exactly. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the way it'll always go. Yeah. You got anything coming up? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, we're just, you know. We do probably the thing Wednesday night. Wednesday night, night yeah. And that'll yeah, probably be my next gig is when I come back next year. That's yeah, cool. We, we rehearse once a year whether we need to. Or well, not. I understand how that's, that is. Uh, that's my motto. It's a long ways to come to do an interview, but I sure nah, appreciate well, you. Well, down here. For the festival. I know. Right. I'm we were in. coming to the festival, and, and a lot of, you know, when we were, used to go to Merle Fest, the right. first year we went to, I, I went to Merle Fest, there was 3,000 people there, and no one in town yeah. knew anything about it. Sure, I remember that. That yeah. might have been when I played there. <laughs> well, it's, it's a victim of its own success. It, 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 it is. Yeah, it's gotten so big, I can't I can't do all that walking. Too many right. stages. You nearly killed me yeah. to walk over here. And too yeah. many hills. Too many hills, too many stages. Well, again, I appreciate you coming and doing well, thanks this. For, thanks for having me in, in, in Dale. And yeah. Thanks. And I listen to your podcasts. Well, you know, thanks. Sometimes, and it's... Yeah. Dale, Dale was one of my favorites. Dale got a lot of listens. Still gets a lot of listens, so... Yeah, I hope somebody listens to this. They will. So, I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yep.
Wait, 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 wait. Okay. I'm going to adjust my glasses here. <laughs> yeah, so you can so the radio world will see what you look like. Okay. Uh, Face made for radio. Ready? Ready? Yeah. 